Earlier, I said, how do you forget about yesterday? Do you think a lot of that comes from your mom, your your willingness to just keep grinding forward, keep moving forward? Yeah, I think a lot of like the grind, the the work ethic that I got, I know I know that it came from my mom. You know, um, when my mom would take us to wrestle and practice, she'd be over there doing school work, and um, you know, with having she still has like tw- I don't know how many pieces of shrapnel of the bullet still in her brain and stuff, and so it makes it a lot harder for learning and yeah keeping that knowledge in there so like she had to do more work and you know um i'm not the best reader and i struggle with reading but if i keep reading and keep getting slowly getting little by little better and better we're here from crypto.com la uh aka kobe's house and as, it's, as we mentioned earlier, lots of co- lo- lo- lots of lake abandons hanging up there. No one actually a couple years ago. Way, but we were here for PBR. Way quieter than it was last night for PBR. It was raging last night, and these two guys right here were raging last night too. Okay. We, yep. Bojer, how you doing, dude? I'm doing good. How are you? How you how you pulling up today? Man, I feel good. Um, feeling like a monster, you know. Come on. We're we good. actually we're gonna run a little. Hey, bo- we got a little clip, a little clip of you right here. We're gonna run. You're actually a returning guest. Yeah. Welcome no. back to the show, dude. Thanks for having me on the show. I had a blast last time. Last night wasn't uh last night wasn't wasn't the best of nights, eh? No, sir. Not too not too good of a night for me. So but. we're gonna turn it up tonight a little? Yeah, tonight's gonna be a different different story. All I gotta do is stay on, do my job, um, just ride two bulls tonight and we'll see where we fall out. Two bulls? Two two bulls, two, two bulls every night, right? Well, uh, it's one bull last night and then two rounds tonight. So I bucked Oh, so off. it's a total of three. Yes, sir. I bucked off last night, so I have to ride my first bull tonight to get on my uh, third bull here. So they take the top 12 and they average to their third. It's called the short round, and that's uh, that's who they decide wins the event. Last night, you were uh, more you were more so uh, concerned about talking to me about going snowboarding. Yeah. I, didn't want, I really didn't. <laughs> we made plans. I didn't really want to talk about the bull riding. <laughs> No, we made plans. We're going to Durango and we're going shredding. He's uh, he's ready to uh, he's ready to hit the slopes. Well, it, it, it's it's not time to hit the slopes yet, but I think when you have a break, we worked out that we can uh, we can get you on the hills. He's been focusing on his jumping, Dan. I know we were we were talking some box talk last night. I'm not worth a so, dang. Yeah, he's he, he likes to hit the big jumps. Uh, they hit me. <laughs> they hit you. Yeah, that's. I heard you've got not- no fear. I hear you pull up to a sixty foot jump and just send it. I mean, I'm, I might, you're sending it and my sending it's probably a little bit different. A hundred percent, dude. I would never get on the back of a bull. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if I'd ever just go full blast down a mountain either like you would. I mean, yeah. Like, ah, well, we'll that see. snow's not soft. Well, it, it is after it snows. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's softer than this dirt we're looking at. No, the, the dirt had a little give. We got to walk around a little dirt bit. Dirt does have a little night, give. It's a little nice. cushiony. Really good dirt here. There's some events we go to. It's like getting on and it's concrete out there. This is really good dirt here. Is the dirt different? Oh, yeah. Uh, every every city's different. different? And so like in Chicago, it's like a white powdery sand. And then when we go to Washington, it's like, what event was it last year? It was like soil. It was like mulch. Oh, yeah, or Everett. Everett, one of those in Washington. It was like uh, some mulch soil. It was weird. This what? one looks like mulch right here. <laughs> that's, it's orange. Why is it orange? That's at Jerry's World, AT and T. Oh, that's Dallas. Yeah, that's a good Oklahoma Texas red dirt down there. It looks there. a little drier there. I call that one my house. That's your house. Mm-hmm. That's your backyard. <laughs> I mean, it pretty much is. We won that event in 2020 yeah. when we had we because of the whole pandemic thing, we had to move some things around. So our world finals were actually at AT&T Stadium that year. And uh, it's pretty cool to be taking it back this year. But last time we were there to host the biggest bull run of the year, Boudreaux was the guy that won it all and yeah, uh, big, made a run at a gold buckle, too. Yeah, big that was your biggest payday? payday? Biggest payday and one uh, one event for me and my career. I like Probably that. The biggest win in my career, too. I like that. And they're showcasing it here, right there, three hundred thousand dollars. Look at that baby face. That is a, that is a, that is a little baby face. Did, did Monster match that for you? Uh, what? The money? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that should be nice, but uh. <laughs> I got a question. So when you win these buckles, 
Does it come with a belt or are you on your own? You gotta like No way, really? Yeah, you gotta order what? your own belt. You gotta order your own belt? Yeah, That's they insane. Don't, they don't give away belts. No, belts That's a good go idea street, though. Like though. the UFC, you get a belt, right? Yeah. I mean, it makes they give sense. You a belt. It makes sense. Brittany would know. Brittany can talk to you about the belt. Yeah, you get the whole thing. <laughs> and then sitting right here, we have Dalen Swearingen from North Carolina, but you live out in New York. I actually live in Texas now. I grew up in New York. <laughs> you grew up in New York. Yeah. Where did you start riding bulls in New York? Well, I started riding like sheep and calves and stuff in North Carolina and then moved to New York. And um, my whole family's always done it. And so it's just kind of something I've grown up doing. I'm Australian, so I'm pretty familiar with sheep. You rode sheep? Yeah. Yeah. You just hold on tight, I guess. It's not really like riding. It's more like... <laughs> Sitting up there and I don't want to know what Dale did. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. want to know what Dale. I mean, I mean, if, 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 if car drivers I starting think, go karts, I, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know there was a sheep division in New Zealand. It's probably massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they ride it a little differently there. And now you're out in Texas. You're out, where in Texas are you? Uh, just outside of Dallas, Sulphur Springs. 2022 PBR World Champion. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice title to have. Why are you Damn. laughing, Matt? I'm laughing because you're finding out something that I've known for years now. About sheep? No, I love Dalen. <laughs> Dalen Swearingen is one of my favorite guys on the entire planet. He's a world champion. He's a world-class athlete. But he is a dog shit interview. It's the worst. He I, I get better by the end of it than I find. No, well, you, you don't. Know, no, you, you don't. Love. He's shy. Yeah. He's well, so polite. Well, I'm gonna, gonna make it much better now. Okay. Got, don't worry, we got his mom here to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he a bad interviewer? Because he's so polite and humble. And I mean that completely transparent. He's so polite and so humble that all you get is a smile and a yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. But it goes back to the character that he is. And, and as good as he is at riding bulls and as good as he is as a human, equally terrible as an interview <laughs> we've talked about it it's, it's no secret yeah i guess you would know you know who's good to interview and who's yeah, not good he, to interview that's a tough that's it that's that's like as you go down the line you figure out man this is going to be a tough interview tonight yeah so it, right now and i noticed last night and and it's i think it's america brazil yeah and Australia, I didn't see if I don't know if there were too many Aussies here last night, but a lot of Brazilians. Yeah, I could assume same as UFC. Brittany's former UFC ring girl of the year many, many, many times. But um, obviously, you're very used to being ar around Brazilians too. Very hard to interview. Yeah, very hard. yeah. Um, there's a lot of them that that have worked really hard on getting their English dialed in. And the cool thing about it is, is these guys know in the locker room that like the ones that can't speak English, there's always somebody next to them that can. So if they need to communicate, it's cool because like you see everybody kind of come together and be able to communicate, even if they don't speak the language. It's pretty fun. Has anybody, does he always make fun of you for your interviews? Yeah, he always makes fun of me. We sit down and did, make fun of we sit down and did a whole <laughs> podcast <laughs> together one time. Makes fun of Dalen for everything. <laughs> I, I used to host a podcast and Dalen was going to be on it one time. And I said, dude, you got to give me more than yes, sir. Or no, sir. And, and honestly, he's right. When you do set and you start talking to him and getting to know him and he opens up, he, he is, he's, he's incredible. He really is. I so, feel like you can't have it all though. I mean, just like coming from like the UFC space, like you, just to be able, that talented and be able to speak and be yeah. on TV. It's just like, it's a whole different beast, you know, pun intended. Hey, unleash the beast. Yeah, I like how you did that. Yeah, she nailed that in there. Um, boys, so let's talk tonight. You guys are both riding again tonight, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah? yeah. Has, 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 w w w when do you find out what bulls you're riding? Uh, we already know, but me and Dale are terrible at looking into that. We usually show up and then we'll go look at Is that how it works? You don't really care because it's yeah, everybody's kind of different. You can't change. Who, who, now, how trade? Do, can you trade bulls? You can't <laughs> trade bulls. <laughs> how many of you guys have, to, have, um, uh, um, is there bulls that you look at and you're like, oh shit, I, I don't want to ride that bull tonight. Or you're like, oh yes, I got the easy one. Yeah, that goes through everybody's mind. But at the end of the day, uh, Dalen's probably the same way. It doesn't matter what they run under us. Uh, if you're riding bulls on a professional level, you should be able to ride him. Or maybe not should, but you got to go at them all the same and still do your job because no matter what you get on, it doesn't change from bull to bull your job. You still got to ride them. Now, what the bull does, 
that changes, but your job stays the same. So you you guys don't go back and look at, at game film. You guys don't watch videos. I know a lot of guys that do, and they'll study, and they'll watch as many as they can, try to pick up those tendencies, but neither one of you guys really, or do you? I'll watch some videos yeah, every... Not very much. Yeah. Like, not, like, the day of, I'll watch a couple videos. Yeah. Um, but normally not, like, way before it kind of... My mind will get to racing, and then it's just normally not. You don't want to think about it too much. It's yeah. like right leading up to, you know, almost showtime, watch a couple, get it in your brain a little bit, and then just focus on what you've got to do, right? Yeah. I mean, that bull can feel a fly on his back and twitch one little mm -hmm. spot of it. Like, he can feel anything. You know, if we think he might be going left, he's probably going to go right. I yep. mean, that happened to me last night, and it's happened to me before, you know. Um, kind of like bulls that are, have a tendency to go left, they kind of feel you over there. They're going to go – like these bulls are very smart. They're um, talented at what they do too. I remember that happening with a big red bull. or yeah, big red bull <laughs> is the start of it. <laughs> hey, Dalen's got a chance to, to get on the world champ. Uh, and 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 in our opinion, has a chance to break the record for the highest score of all time. Is that tonight? No, no, no. Yeah, this PBR was, was at the yeah, yeah we'll at the PBR World Finals, and so cool. we're all pumped because, to his credit, when Dalen gets to that point where he's in that flow and opens up and exposes himself and reaches out with that leg to show that he's in a dominant position, one of the best that's ever done it. And so we're all so excited about it because we know this bull is going to turn back into Dalen's wheelhouse. He's going to be able to show off a little bit, and the bull comes out and decides to change it up on him that day. Yeah, he did. Broke all of our hearts. Everybody locker room. Yeah, mine too. Everybody. Like that. Yeah. I didn't. That guy, <laughs> do you guys, do you get to like, or do you go around the bull before you ride it in the evening, or is it like you just kind of wait until it's in the pen. I mean, definitely if I see the bull, I'm getting on the back pins when I'm walking by. I talk some shit. Do you? Oh, yeah, like, I'm you're not like, oh, hey, sweetie. <laughs> you don't want to, like, make friends with it, right? Because no, you want it to perform. No, so you kind of, like, give it a little him. stare. I'm like, what's up? Yeah, you got me tonight. Yeah. So I don't work all the time, but you got to have good confidence. So you got to give it a little talk, a little, yeah. little shit talking. Yeah, you got to scare him a little bit. Boudreaux's so intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I give him that stank eye. They, they bow down. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, right? Uh, it didn't work last night. Okay, okay. <laughs> you got to switch that around tonight. Yeah, I'm going to use the other eye. The other stink eye. <laughs> yeah. What's going it. on through your head when you're sitting in the pen and you're about to get released? Uh, nothing. Just do my job. Try hard. Like I try to clear my mind because the more I think about it, the worse I'm probably going to do. Like I, If I'm thinking about a hundred different things when I'm trying to get – myself prepared like when i crawl in the bunny shoot if i'm thinking i need to do this need to do that need to do this i'm probably gonna fuck something up all the way like uh it's probably not gonna be good for me so i try to just breathe focus on my breathing clear my mind completely and just know try hard do not let go do not let go at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you're in a good position or a bad position if you keep your head of that rope and stay hanging on sometimes the bull might jump back underneath you and you will get a score yeah but how do you how do you like forget last night? Because a lot of people will will set and they'll they'll replay it in their mind that you know these are the mistakes I made. But Dalen, you're a world champ. You've been able to compartmentalize. Like, how do you forget about what happened last night and focus on what's in front of you right now? I think the biggest thing for me lately that I've been trying to work on is I've been trying to change a few things. So kind of last night didn't work, you know, and so this you know got to make something happen. So kind of. You put a little more pressure, but I think I think pressure is good to a point, and that's um, whatever you put on yourself and whatever you can handle. But I think pressure is good, and and still having last night a little way on you, but not you know like last night's over. There's nothing I can do to change it, mm -hmm. but make tonight the best that I can make it. Pressure makes diamonds, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, routine. Do you have like a, a like a daily routine you have to get ready for what's gonna happen tonight? Yeah, I normally you know go eat like a smoothie or something in the morning, and then go take a nap, and then uh, come ride some bulls. Drink some kombucha. <laughs> he has bad gas on kombucha. This <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> my roommate every weekend at the PBR event. So you guys are roommates every weekend. Oh, so you guys like live together? You guys are like a uh, like a like a couple. You're like a <laughs> traveling couple. It's the ugliest girlfriend I've ever had. <laughs> Danny's used to that. I not, not always, but when 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 the when they do the Olympics, she would always have a roommate, right? 
Yeah, yeah, we would get a roommate, but I mean, I've probably spent more nights with you. In yeah, we're, we're 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 officially a couple. <laughs> nice. We <We're, laughs> almost got married one time, but we didn't. I'm surprised. He got his own green card. What about superstitions? Right Do you guys have any like <laughs> little things under your belt? Just like maybe little like little things. Like if something ain't been going good for a little while, I'll change something, change something small up, kind of stuff like that. But like what? Give me an example. Um, like sometimes, like just for instance, my boots will, I always keep them kind of tucked out, but I'll tuck them in every now and then, you know, like just change something little up and then, you know, sometimes it'll work and, okay. um, but just little things like that. And if it works, do you stay with it? Yeah. And I stay with it until it, that doesn't, doesn't work and then I'll go back. How are you going to wear your pants tonight? You're going to put them in or out? Yeah, I'm going to tuck them in tonight. <laughs> right. it's working out. Are there certain things you won't eat on game day? Uh... Or colors you won't wear, hat on the bed, any of that hat, stuff? Nah, hat on the bed, I okay. don't like that. Yeah. Hat on the bed? Yeah. You never put a hat on the bed, man. Never. Never put your hat on the bed? Never put a hat on the bed. And I don't ever hey. believe in luck or bad luck or anything like that, but the one time I put my hat on the bed, I put it down on the bed and someone was like, you can't do that, it's bad luck. That was the day in Albuquerque where I broke my jaw. Huh? And so I was like, oh, <laughs> it's yeah. It's bad luck, man. Never put my hat on that bed again. <laughs> that is bad luck. Yeah, it's very bad. I got to... Terrible scar and chip. Oh, you teeth. you let me play with your chin last night. You Wait, know, what? Like, cauliflower <laughs> on your <What>? chin. <laughs> now the truth comes out. <laughs> what were you guys? He's got doing? cauliflower under his chin. Like like fighters have cauliflower. Yeah. That that's from that getting hit the face so much. Thanks to the PBR. Yeah. Welcome to the Unleash the Beast. <laughs> Wait, it's it's the company's fault that you get hit in the face. Y'all see the bulls they bring to these the events? They're like so big. They are big. They are really big. <laughs> Um, we're here in crypto, obviously very famous arena, Lakers, Kings, Kobe. music, Kobe. We're in Kobe's house. That's that's what I like to call it. Um, RIP. Is to to, to be, being in the bigger like Madison Square Garden here, maybe at home in Dallas, like what's your guys' favorite arenas to uh to perform at? And definitely Madison Square Garden in LA. Like last night it was loud in here. The pe people were packed in here and it was loud. This was probably one of the best crowds all year. Sacramento yeah. was good too. Yeah, I've been coming here for, for, I don't even know. I'd have to ask Miss Carrie. But I've been coming here. This is our fifth year. I think you've, you've been here every year, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I missed it. Yeah. I mean, we had COVID, so maybe that, like, we didn't do a year or something. Right, or right. Or two, who knows? But, like, it's sold out every every night. Yeah. I have never not seen it sold out here. It's crazy. I've been to many Clipper games here that are not sold out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there's not a ticket available tonight. Yeah, uh, nothing. It, it's been sold out for a while now, and I mean we're sitting in an empty building right now. You you think about that. You look around. You look at all the space in here and think that there's not going to be an empty spot to watch what these guys do. That's so cool. It's pretty cool. It's so, pretty surreal. So, yeah. Did you guys sometimes yeah. just come before it opens up and? Walk around on the dirt, maybe go back there and check the bulls out. I, I like to. I like to get in here before anybody else will get in here. I like. I will go to the shoots and like say a prayer and just kind of soak it all in because you don't, I'm only going to get to do this once. Yeah. This, this is this career is short lived. Um, Bull Adams young. And so I like to soak it all in at each arena because you're I'm only going to get to do this once. I was noticing that last night. It seems like you guys are getting younger and younger. The guys are getting younger and younger and I'm getting older and older. <laughs> <laughs> I like this question in the chat. Chelsea asked, what excites you the most about the future of rodeo? Uh, I think the future of rodeo and bull riding in general is headed in the right direction. You got this stuff with the PBR teams coming up. That's a, uh, I feel like that's bringing in a whole nother crowd to the sport of bull riding. Like when we went to Austin to the Moody Center, I I would have to say the average fan the the age in that building was probably anywhere from twenty to thirty, and there was just so many twenty to thirty year olds that were just in college that coming to watch that bull riding, and I feel like used to it's just an older crowd you know it's just kind of been the older people the older western style people and now i feel like with the team still it's pulling in a whole younger generation and i think it's headed in a very very good direction what i love about this is is you think about what we're doing right now we're on a monster energy platform monsters huge they're involved in every extreme sport in the world and the fact that that monster is taking the time to dive in and and pay close attention to what these guys are doing and more importantly to help raise the the identity of some of these athletes and put them on a platform like this like that is huge for the sport 
in general because now you're seeing people that are fans of what you guys have done fans of like your old world in the ufc that might look at this get a glimpse of it and go holy crap like i can't I believe I what these guys are doing see the pure athleticism and the heart and determination of a guy trying to do something like this and and i had people stop me in the hotel this morning and they said we'd never been we thought it might be kind of hokey and once we got here we saw the opening and well, the show started holy crap we're hooked and like now they're fans for life it takes that one time of showing up and seeing it in person and how drastically different it is live than watching it on television it's no different than anything else you know i've been to a million nascar races now it was hard for me to watch it until i saw it live and then yeah, i got a new go appreciation there, right like such a different pitch, appreciation you're up on the box yep. you see the the you hear it you yeah, feel it i mean the ground the energy <laughs> everything but like that's like one thing you 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 put your like is the intro here your guys' intro it's so entertaining it's the, bas the basically because of the announcer fire, the, the, the way that you guys all get intro the music into it it's it, it's electric and 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 it's it's like last night we were at dinner and we had a big group of bmx's and we had a bunch of pro athletes here last night motocross riders skaters um bmx guys and all their best at their craft they're watching you guys and they're like holy shit this is the gnarliest thing in the world and i think like for a lot of athletes it's like we were talking about earlier like to be in control um and anyone at their craft, whether it be a motorbike or a snowboard or a skateboard, they're in control of what's going on. You guys, you've got you and a bull, and the, and 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 your job is to hold on to the bull. So you're not necessarily in control no. of what's going on. No, it's it's definitely we try to control the situation as best as we can control it, and it's an uncontrollable situation. If that makes any sense, yeah. <laughs> But then also going back to the entertainment value, Matt, of like the entertainment value of what you get when you come to an event like this is it's it's yeah, I think some people could look at it and be like, oh, it's just, you know, guys riding on a bull, which is insane in itself. But the entertainment value of the clowns, mm -hmm. the clown yep. and, and yourself and and the energy of like the crowd that it brings. But you guys deliver entertainment the whole time. And the music. I think yeah. people underestimate the the music. I think that they think they're coming into a sport where it's all going to be like country music and kind of a throwback. But you got to remember, I mean, these guys are how old are you? 25. How old are you? 25. Okay, they're in their mid 20s. They're 18 to, you know, mid to late 20s. They're listening to the same things that everybody else is listening to. You go into the locker room, you're not listening to a whole lot of country music. I mean, it's a vibe. We're straight back there. It's a it's a vibe. <laughs> and we want to bring the vibe that these guys are having in the locker room. We want to bring it out here. And we want to make sure that every single person gets touched in some way, shape, or form to where they leave here and go, damn, that was a good time. Dalen, what are you listening to in the locker room? Whatever's Boudreaux. He's, he's always. Boudreaux, the one what are you carrying. listening to? Oh, I'm do you, do you just do you, do you just whatever Boudreaux does? You're right. Dan was like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm in. It. <laughs> That's not the smartest thing, dude. No, not. <laughs> That's not the best person to look up to. Okay. <laughs> no, he's always the one that has all the music, and there's like him, Boudreaux, Keyshawn. And Zeke, those, those are the three. Dolan. I can see Zeke. I can see Zeke. The first time I met you, we were in a potty bus and you were DJing. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might have. But okay. even even Danny brought that up. He was like, man, uh, he, he wanted to hear. What did you want to hear? It, Old it Country was, Road? It was just so loud in here last <laughs> night. Like the music, the fireworks. Like it was just, it was gripping and it was so cool. Um, not just because of the music, but like, I felt like I got to learn it so fast, yeah. the sport from like, you know, the announcer, the clown, like, and you guys really doing it where it was like, it, it does make you like an instant fan. And I think coming into the building was just like, it's such a game changer. It, it's cool because it's not like every other sport. Like you get to hear 40 different stories. Yeah. Everybody's got their own story. Everybody's got a character. He's like our Burt Kreischer. Like he's just a, he's an energy of his own. Like Boudreaux's always happy. I walk in the locker room last night and he's, I, I don't know really what he was doing. It was some kind of dance. What but. were you doing? I, I, were your clothes I, on or off? At my one point, I had my shirt off, but I had to take my nipples because I have new shirts. <laughs> oh, man, that's the I worst. Just, oh, nipple? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. You guys get some serious nipple burn. Yeah, it was. I've gotten it from <laughs> surfing, but I didn't but realize, I, them were good. I didn't realize the good. bull riding, you could really chafe them. See, these are yeah. things that you don't think about. I mean, there's yeah, a high-profile no, athlete. Nipples back there. Problems yeah. back there. <laughs> wow. Help me put it on. <laughs> just a little 
little band-aids. Dalen, are you yeah. taping his nipples? <laughs> He's like, oh, not the tape again. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> no, but the music was so loud. One thing I was expecting that I didn't hear was Old Town Road. No, no, yeah, uh, not gonna hear it tonight either. Yeah, no, I really uh, don't like that song. Uh, uh-uh. he's our music guy, Richard. Okay, big old boy, he's good. Compton Cowboys are in here. Yeah, Little Wayne's manager was in here. That was pretty sick. I think there's a big like switch right now with country music. I think country music has become really mainstream in the last few years, and in, in a good way. I think like, um, uh, y- you look at you know Morgan Wallen. I remember the first time we we met Morgan. He came to a <laughs> an X Games party in Minnesota and he was just open up for Luke Bryant and he's obviously come a long way, but it's Jelly Roll and there's this big transfer. It's like Post Malone's uh, headlining uh, Coachella this year. And I think country is has gone way more mainstream in the last, whatever it is, say five years. Oh yeah, well, every, every, that new Beyonce track right, just dropped. Straight to country radio. Straight to country. Really? Yeah. Del Rey has a country album coming out. Really? Yeah. I know Post uh, Post Malone is singing, so there's a big rodeo. It's like one of the richest one day rodeos with all the events. It's called the American. Post Malone singing at that this year. Post Malone's it's, also at a, a stagecoach. I just said that. Oh, you did. <laughs> it's cool to be a cowboy though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool kind of the Yellowstone right effect. Right? That's a sticker right, right there. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's it's the whole Yellowstone effect, you know. And and it's like you see this, and it's a part of the fabric of our country, right? Yeah. And it's like we all grew up wanting to be cowboys, and so I love it when somebody goes and buys a cowboy hat just for the weekend to show up because we all wanted to be cowboys our whole lives. Why shouldn't somebody want to be able to be a cowboy for a weekend? I love it. Call it whatever you want. Call it playing dress up, whatever. But the fact that somebody wants to be a cowboy even if it's for a couple of hours that makes my day yeah but i think what makes a cowboy and you touched on this the last show with chase is it's being a gentleman you know like really being that proper miss gentleman. ma'am thank yeah, you exactly holding like, the chair one holding thing the to wear door. a hat but it's another one to have that attitude of values values yeah yeah, yeah they love their mamas talking about okay so hyacinth potentially jb mooney is he is he is he the staple there's no one like is there has there like who did you look up to growing up as a kid as a kid i looked up to jb a little bit um a lot honestly just because he I feel like when I watched the PBR back home, it was JB. I mean, it was JB when I was watching the PBR back home, getting ready to be here one day. I was just watching JB. So I actually got to go to a NFR in Las Vegas with JB Mooney. My last one, it was his first one. It was pretty cool to share a locker room. So it's a 10 day long rodeo for 10 days straight. And there's just 15 of us guys there that qualify to go there. And I got to share a locker room with him for 10 days straight. And it was pretty cool. Every sport in the world has the GOAT conversation, right? Yeah, right. It's no different with us. Yeah. Our, our guys have the same conversation. Who do, you, who do you put as that top of the tier? Who's the GOAT? I would say JB. You know, he's picked the mentality he went into picking every short round bull. Like, he wouldn't pick the for sure win, the good ride. Like, he'd pick the bull that he's going to be the most points and probably not going to be the funnest one to get on. Like, how many times did he pick Bushwhacker? He you know, a like, dragon slayer. like he just, you know, he rode all the top bulls during that time. He doesn't have the most world titles, but in my opinion, he has the most moments. Right. And that's what makes memories are those moments. And JB has more of those moments than anybody in the history of this sport right now, because we watched him get on Bushwhacker, who had spreads in ESPN, the magazine, Sports Illustrated, USA Today, uh, like every news media in the world was covering this bull and how great he was at doing his job and the record he was setting. And JB picked him and picked him and picked him 12, 13, 14 times. And the day that he rode that bull in Tulsa, everybody in our industry was losing their minds because there was so much anticipation forget about the 13 or however many buck offs unsuccessful attempts all that mattered was that moment and jb gave us so many of those it it was incredible Taylor, we got some video footage here that we're gonna run um why why are you showing that (laughs) that wasn't the best opening (laughs) that was not the best opening sorry my bad this My is bad. a terrible idea, Dingo. No, 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 no. no we're, this one's good again. We're, we're back. We're, we're back now. <laughs> this, I think, this is actually footage from a, a docu series. Am I right? That was on Prime Video called "The Ride," yeah. Which I think is one of the coolest things. If you really want to know what 
these guys are like. It did a really good job of diving into their real personalities. There's Dalen's mother and, and seeing their real life story. We forget that athletes on any sport, on any television, any platform, that they are real human beings. And this does a great job of like showing the real people behind the, the stories we see on TV. I want to see really video cool. footage of him riding the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll text it to you later. There was a clip uh, there with your mother. She Something happened to her. What was that? Um, yeah, so my mom actually got uh, shot in the head twice. Oh, my gosh. Um, and uh, But you can't tell by looking at her, you know. Uh, just, um, you know, it was just amazing how God kind of worked everything out. Like, we lived in the hills of North Carolina, and, and if, it, if she would have happened there, like me and my little brother, we wouldn't have known what to do, and who knows what would have happened but it happened at her work, and uh, and when it happened at her work, like she lived in, she worked in town, so she got to the hospital quicker, and um, so yeah, it all worked. And it said your mother guided you towards bull riding. She didn't guide me towards bull riding, but she always kept me involved in the rodeo um, world. Uh, so like when me and my brother were younger, to get to the rodeos, my brother had like a little contract act. So he was like a trick roper and he did like a little whip act and he kind of paid our way. My mom was going back to school to be a nurse. And so like we didn't really have the money to go, but I guess my brother kind of helped me go and ride steers. Steer riding didn't doesn't really pay the best, <laughs> but uh, the contract <laughs> act paid pretty good. <laughs> can, can I circle back, though? Because earlier I said, how do you forget about yesterday? Do you think a lot of that comes from your mom, your your willingness to just keep grinding forward, keep moving forward? Yeah, I think a lot of like the grind, the, the work I think that I got, I know I know that it came from my mom, you know. Um, when my mom would take us to wrestling practice, she'd be over there doing school work and, um, you know, with having, she still has like, tw- I don't know how many pieces of shrapnel of the bullet still in her brain and stuff. And so it makes it a lot harder for learning and yeah keeping that knowledge in there. So like she had to do more work and, you know, um, I'm not the best reader and I struggle with reading. But if I keep reading and keep getting, slowly yeah. getting little by little better and better. Crazy. One of our other moto guys, Chino, has a bullet that's still lodged in the back of his head. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Crazy. That's that's the kind of things that, that that fascinate me as a storyteller. Yeah. At my job, I'm like, yeah, I'm here to entertain everybody, but I'm here to also let the world know how incredible these guys are. Just to get to this point, to go through things like that and to still be able to get to a level of competition and become a world champion, to become a world finals champ, to be a, a future world champion after everything they've endured in their regular life like this sport alone is amazing to be able to do but to live the lives that they've lived yeah and still be able to be this successful i say that all the time when when i'm talking to anybody about this podcast and ever since i joined it's the one one of the most interesting thing is sitting down with these athletes and hearing their stories and hearing that like what they've come from and where they are and they're like they're drive to keep going it's it's fascinating and being one of the hosts on the podcast has taught me so much about them it's amazing like i know all these stories yeah and i still hear them and like just now i got tears in my eyes i got goosebumps like i get chills hearing it even though i've known this for years i these guys are my family it's yeah. still it, it has that much of an impact yeah. yeah like you were saying earlier matt you guys travel together you guys room together it is it's like it's like a family and you guys are here this weekend and then in another city the next weekend yeah. and another city the next weekend and it's 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 a traveling you know it's like it's like you guys are part of a band or you guys are part of a circus or a bit of both it's a but it's like blessing is what it is man these arenas are your home you know yeah. and it's you guys come here to entertain and and compete and you guys put your lives on the line every time you hop on the back of a bull and you guys know that oh yeah that's crazy <laughs> it's very mentally uh, mentally exhausting this sport it, sport is and it's very humbling i mean if you think about it, the guy that wins the world title or wins at the end of the year usually has a 60, 50 percent riding percentage, you know, 60 to 50. That's fucking off half your bulls. Yeah. And just a little bit over half. That's I mean, that's tough. I mean, think about the guy that's 50th place. What's his riding percentage? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's very mentally exhausting and uh, it's uh, you got to love it. If you don't love it, then you probably go make it. Right. You have to do it for the love of the sport. 
Because like like what I said with Chase earlier, there's no guaranteed contracts in this sport. There's yeah. not a multi-million dollar, you know, signing bonus that these guys are getting. If they're not competing, they're not making money. And that's where like we're so thankful that there are people like Monster Energy that step on to kind of help keep these guys moving through their you know injuries through the tough times through the the highs and lows of of any sport but to be able to know that you know hey I've got somebody in my in my corner and a support system that's going to be there even in my hard times to help me support like it's it's unbelievable and and like you can't say enough good things about it right yeah yeah it's 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 uh it's definitely pretty pretty wild sport and uh and 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 but the 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 love and the turnout you guys get it's it's crazy like i've never not been to one that i'm like oh well there's not that many people never been to a boring show have you never been to a boring show never and you guys got a new clown did you guys see the new clown out there last night brinson yeah you like that he's uh yeah are you related to brinson no but like i grew up my family did you say are you related to it (laughs) (laughs) we grew up back in north carolina they're kind of related to everybody You grew up. You grew up together. Yeah, like he worked. Um, him and his dad worked a lot of my uh, my parents' rodeos, um, and so like we kind of grew up. And so it's pretty cool to to be here, kind of with him. He's kind of a second generation rodeo clown. His dad was a pretty famous rodeo clown. Yeah, Ho- uh, Hollywood Harris. And when when Brinson, the guy that's entertaining now, when he was a kid, they called him Boogerhead. I know <laughs> we still call him Booger, uh, but but his dad would put him in a in a backpack and and take him to the rodeos and like yeah. making part of his act as a baby. And so the kids growing up in it a lot like like Dalen grew up in a rodeo family. You know, a lot of people in this industry second, third, fourth generation talents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's wild, guys. Are you um are you like uh, like uh, we were talking earlier. <laughs> Are you guys underwear wearers or non underwear wearers? <laughs> <laughs> it's so much weirder when there's no context. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to say, um, I'm an underwear wearer. Yeah, no, no, no. I, say that five times fast. I like blue. Why are you having to think so hard, Boudreaux? I mean, yeah, it's really he's, not he's that got difficult a big of a question. Underwear I think it wardrobe. Just depends. It's got a whole. Kind of just depends on the day. Yeah. <laughs> depends on where yeah. I'm going. Depends on how long he's, he's been clean. on the road, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about chaps? Do you guys switch out chaps? Do you guys have favorite chaps? Do you guys change colors a lot? I, 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 yeah, I know I'm still laughing at the underwear thing. The yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not going for the arseless chap look. I'm just talking okay. about chaps now, all right? <laughs> because they're a huge part of you guys' look. They're all assless? All chaps are assless. Well, I mean with your pants on. You got your oh, pants on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not walking out with no pants on. That would, that would, and your chaps. That would turn heads. That okay. might. <laughs> <laughs> that went on to something. I can see so, Danny Duncan doing that. We do. Uh, everybody has a little style, different sound of style with their chaps, what they like. And there's some guys that change up colors and everything. And so there's, I got like black rough outs now. So it's like well, your chaps usually have like the shiny side. Well, I flipped them over to where they're like inside out. So I got the rough side that's on top. A little extra grip. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's helped any, but it, <laughs> <laughs> Dang, but it looks cool. It's a little more of a fuzzy look. Yeah. yeah. What'd you say? Help me the one time I used them. Yeah. Tell us about that. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah. In Chicago, Chicago I, uh, my flight kept getting delayed and then they finally canceled it. And I got on a different one. They canceled that one. There was bad weather in Chicago. Well, my bag ended up going to Florida, then going to the other airport in Chicago, and I flew in like right as the bull riding was starting, and it was still a forty-minute drive, and um, so I used Boudreaux stuff, and I used John Krimber's. I used a little bit of everybody. You stuff. picked, yeah. You made, you made, it, you I made an outfit, it, and he showed up, and I throw him my stuff, and he goes out there and beats me, and I'm like. What the heck? Look, those chaps are ruined. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, I just gave you that stuff. How are you going to go beat me? I mean, you could have got second. <laughs> what, what is that Give like? Give my chaps back. <laughs> Give me my stuff Wait, did back. Did he win that night? <laughs> yes, he won it. I won second. He flies <laughs> in, steals Boudreaux's equipment, and then steals the lead from him. Yeah. All like, like is that. that. In is that ha- having to wear somebody else's gear, is that, did that, obviously it didn't really mess with you too much? No, I think, uh, you know, sometimes the less you think about it you're just there you show up you got what you got and so you have to make the best of it and sometimes that's you know just going and not thinking about what's going to happen you know just letting it all play out how you know god wants to play out and i think that's that's what it happened 
That's what yeah. need to happen more, I guess. <laughs> I think you guys are kind of lucky, though, too, with your outfits. Being a monster guy, the black and monster M claw always looks good. Oh, it looks great. It's yeah. kind of a no go. Like when you see the NASCAR running around the track, the black, the green M on the car always kind of murders. It's it's always, you guys have kind of got a built in with with the with the monster sponsorship. Um, Danny, uh, 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 as a two time Olympic silver medalist, would you get on a bull? I mean, I was actually kind of asking last night where I said, you know, like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a big incentive for other athletes to get on one of these? Donald Cerrone. Like, what do you think is going to happen there? <laughs> I, I wish we had a close up of that one. That's the most I, honest reaction yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, on, I know like, he's tough, but he's, I, he's not going to ride him. I mean, it, there's guys that have been riding their whole life since they were four years old and they can't ride the bull. And what do you guys think about Twisted Steely as a bull? It said it's a pretty gnarly bull, yeah, right? He's a, that's what I'm saying. There's guys that are on this tour riding their whole life that can't get by that bull. Like he's not just an easy one to ride. They don't ride him all the time. And wh why don't they ride him all the time? That, that there's some bulls like they have a repetition. He's one of the bulls. Um, we were talking about drawing bulls earlier. He's one of the bulls. Like people draw, you're like, yes, I got a good bull because he is a good bull. But in their mind, they're like. He's got something to him because not everybody rides him. I think what he's only been ridden once or twice. Yeah, he just that. doesn't really have a set pattern. Like, you know, left, one day he'll right. go le left, be right there around the right, or jump out there too and go left or right. You know, like he always kind of has his timing isn't like a lot of these bulls on this on this tour. We kind of know what what it is. His is who knows what he's it got. Is. Something he's still making it up. I haven't been on him, so I really don't know what it is. There is a seat that these guys can get in. And a lot of these bulls have a little, well, like what we'll call a little pocket where the timing, they can find a good seat and get yeah. in a rhythm with them. And then there's some bulls that it's like trying to, you know, like the shopping cart. I always get at the store that has one wheel that like, just I does always this get that shopping every cart damn too. time. There's some bulls <laughs> that feel like that, right? Yeah. Every time I get that one. But there are some that you just can't get in a groove with, and it makes it like you have to try that much harder. Uh, it definitely makes our job easier when one feels good under us. When one feels bad under us, it's just a fight. It's I, I can imagine if just being in a boxing ring, just throwing Hail Marys the whole time. I mean, it's just rough. Yeah. The bull's rough underneath you. It's a fight. When they're smooth underneath you, it's easy. It flows. Do you so, think that there's a body style that would make a better bull rider? So, like, yes. Cowboy's a tall, 100%. you know. So, I mean, because, you know, you guys all kind of seem like the same body type. Is it? I think fit and ripped. Fit yeah. Really that's really good. No, but I, I mean, like, but Cowboy's a taller. He'd be a taller bull rider, right? Yes. Yeah. He's kind of a bigger bull He's rider. a bigger Isn't bull rider. Isn't J.B. Moody kind of tall? Or no? Yeah, but he's super like lean. Yeah, lean. Like, what do you guys weigh? Lean. Count. What do you guys weigh? Both of you. Uh, one forty-five. Daylon. 145. I weigh about one sixty. And and so that, one of the heavier bull riders. Yeah. Bingo. So right there, you know that one forty to one fifty, you know yeah. one fifty-five. That like, boy's like one eighty right now, maybe. I think maybe he's a little bigger than that. Yeah, I think yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's going to make a difference. It has to. I, crap, Absolutely. It's over. Right. Like we, I think the best build for a bull rider is kind of longer legs and a shorter torso. And kind of shorter arms because it's like Keeps a pivot. You yeah, it's like a pivot. Like guys with long arms, a lot of times, and in, in your arm depends on where you put your rope and where your body's at. Your arms either got to be bent or straight. And then when your arm gets straight, there's only one point of return from there, and it's right back to him. You've oh, you be, got the long legs. It's easier just to stand up. Yeah, get yep. down there, and you can kind of get up under their belly. Like mm -hmm. so, with your long legs, you can go around and hook up on, like just kind of. Get a little so that might, that might be his uh, his benefit. He's a kickboxer, long legs. He's gonna have to squeeze that bull in half. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard bull to squeeze in half. Yeah, yeah. And I notice when you're back there or when they come out, there's smaller bulls and bigger bulls. Mm -hmm. Is there like, do you want to be on a smaller bull or a bigger bull? That makes a difference too. Um, I really don't care. I, I bet it doesn't yeah. matter to him either. But it does make a difference on how you ride them. Right. Changes changes the way that you approach it, right? Well, because you the way you wrap your legs around it too, right? Well, and some bulls will have like more power, yeah. And so you you address everything. It's like I and I keep going back to the the fighting equation. I think it's the simplest way to to equate it is like some guys are really good wrestlers, some guys are really good strikers. You've got to be able to combat whatever that bull is good at, right? Yes. Yeah. Like people always say, oh, that bull it didn't fit my style or my style. Well. It's our it's called bull riding for a reason. It's not 
pick what bull you want to get on and what he does. It's called bull riding. So you get on the bull and ride the bull for whatever he does. I mean, that's our job. Some bulls will be real big showy. Like they'll jump really high in the air and have a lot of what we call drop to them. So like basically the front end falls out from underneath you. Um, and, and with that comes a lot of power. And so the guys will really have to like set back and wait for that drop, be able to counteract that balance like this, where a lot of bulls, will also just turn back and they'll get in a spin. So it completely changes the moves that you've got to make to be able to, to counteract that bull and stay there for eight seconds. And then so, like, if you guys are watching tape or you're watching, just watching, are you guys more so, you're watching the bulls, right? You're not really watching. Well, just kind of watching the whole thing. I feel like Daling can say this too. You've he, watched enough bull runs right now. Like, we can watch the whole thing and pretty much tell you what all happened, exactly how it happened, just the, the minute it gets done. Yeah. Like what the guy did or what the bull did. We can kind of watch both at the same time. What about like happy bulls? I love it. Like, is there ever like a time? <laughs> like how often will they open the gate and the bull just kind of be like, ah, I don't really feel Starts like doing it. prancing out. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't, I don't want, whatever bull that is, I think that's I want a happy bull. Can you get like eight seconds of just kind of like. <laughs> I, that's what I need. That's what I really? need. Really? Yeah, but that won't bull. score well though, right? No, it not at score. all. But at least I made eight seconds. <laughs> then you get more get points than you did last night. So have you ever had one of those though? Like where, I mean, just kind of. You didn't feel like working today? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. But I mean, here you get one of them. You gotta get like a stoned bull. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like maybe somebody yeah, walked yeah, by on that the happens, and it's just kind of because it's like a ticking time bomb under you. Really? Like you're out there and you nod your head and just imagine that bull walk out and you're just sitting there and it's just at any second this something can just come unglued. Everybody thinks they want a bull to just turn and like walk out. But it's a ticking time bomb. That's <laughs> like the scariest <laughs> is that thing scary? ever. Really? Yeah. Yes, it is because you you expecting to buck. And so you kind of get out there and you'll kind of relax. And then right when you relax, ba -ba. bang. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I saw a bull come out that like buckled his leg a little. And then, and then the guy ended up riding him, but they, they counted it a no ride. What happened there? So Luciano. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of times a bull will stumble. Yeah. And so we were talking about dirt earlier. And as crazy as this sounds, for the bulls, you want that dirt to be a little more solid because it gives them better footing. They can push off of better. If that dirt's too soft, then, you know, they, they dig a little deeper and it'll slow them down a little bit. We actually have a company that we call the Dirt Guys, and that's their whole job. That's their whole purpose is to make sure that the texture of that dirt is just right so that those bulls can push off of and so they're not stumbling. Uh, we don't really care how hard it is for these guys to hit. It's not no, what they, we're worried they, about. They don't care about our well-being at all. <laughs> the bull doesn't? The bull, no, well, the people. The, the some bulls might. <laughs> I mean, you're the back fans, there talking so. shit to the bulls. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but not the, ha the happy bulls. I'm nice to the happy bulls. I only talk to the ones I don't like. Like, I got my friends back there, but if you ain't in my group, then... So are, there up, ones, are there ones back there you're feeding carrots to? Yeah. Is, and there's <laughs> other ones I'm feeding dog food. Is there a bull right now that you guys want to get on? Is, the, is there a bull out there that, like, you just... That's your dream opponent? Man hater. Really? Just because he's the best in the world right now. I feel like if you want to be the best, you got to ride the best. So. See, I love that mentality. That's a bull that that I don't think there's a lot of guys that would say that's the one I want to get on because this is a bull that he is the number one bull in the world. He's the leading contender for a world champion, and he looks treacherous to me. Yeah. Like the way he kicks, he's so steep. But the fact that that's the bull that comes to mind right away shows the mentality of a guy. Uh, Dalen? You were talking about the moments earlier, Dalen. Yeah. Hey, that's one of them chances yeah. for a moment. Yeah, I mean, watching Boudreaux pick him a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. getting on him, you know, that, you know, shows the character. Um, I'm just any bull that I can get on, I'm, I'm happy to get on him. How long did you last on Man Hater that day? Not very long. And he honestly he didn't feel bad. I think I rode him maybe three seconds or two seconds. And he kicked so hard. His back hit me in the back. What? Like his back of – I've noticed like, that they're so fine for like yeah. a while, like shot dude. Me yeah. forward, and when it did, I literally step off on my feet right next to him, and he just walks off. <sighs> it's almost like – you talk about their backs. It's almost like they make a J. Right. And like their back end comes so explosively, yes. almost straight up and down that it, it's interesting to see these guys. They've got to worry about focus. And then all of a sudden you've got half of a 1600 pound animal smacking you in the back of the head that just now you've got to look at not only counteracting what the bull's movements are. Right. Now his back hips are smacking you in the back of the head. Like it's it's crazy to watch, man. Mm hmm. 
Who do you think is going to win tonight? Well, one of us. I, I hope so. Duh. I was I was hoping I was hoping one of you guys was going to point Jaylen at Jalen and Boudreaux. But you guys go don't. Team. You guys are going to go into every event thinking like you're going to win. Oh yeah. Right. Otherwise, you're not here. Yeah. I mean, there ain't a bull rider back there in that locker room that's not trying to win a world title. Yeah. It's, competition here is real. It's it's good too. Does it get intense back there on on competition night? Or are you guys all pretty kind of supportive with each other? It just gets comp. Uh, more competitive like when you climb down the bug and shoot that's when the real comp that's who we're going against the bull I'm not going bull. against Boudreaux I'm going against yeah the bull that I got tonight and uh, and what I, bulls are you riding tonight the sky's the limit tonight the sky are you is that a joke or is that a bull yeah no I think it's the bull I was wondering about some of these bull names too so is there a, a least favorite bull names you guys have like what makes a good bull name? What makes a good I'll, bad bull? I name? like funny bull names. Like I'd name one Cooter, Cooter, Drunker and Cooter Brown, Drunker and Cooter Brown. <laughs> there was a bull called Snoop Dogg last night. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah. That one actually went hard. You wrote too. Snoop Dogg? I didn't write him. <laughs> Snoop Dogg wrote him. in for a flip. <laughs> Snoop Dogg was pretty gangster last night. <laughs> yeah, he was not all chilled out. Uh, uh-uh. uh. You, you talk oh, about yeah, the, well, he's smoking some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. expected him to be really chill and mellow, but <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Was not the Snoop Dogg's back there just eating carrots, dude. <laughs> you, you, he's part of the crew. Talk nice. about these guys and like the competitiveness of the locker room. One thing I can tell you, you won't see is when one of these guys bucks off, you're not going to see another guy come up and go, it's okay, buddy. You'll get it next time. We get out the way. You get out of the way. <laughs> when a guy's had a bad day at the office, you stay away from I've him. I've noticed that. I've that actually, I've flying. actually stood yep. back there and seen, seen multiple, like when it's a bad ride, yeah. you stay, stay, stay away from him. Let them go through their emotions. Yeah. 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 You see a couple, like a couple helmets get thrown. And, and, and there were guys that, that we've talked about today that had the reputation of being a bad loser. Isn't that what you're supposed to be if you're competitive? I think so. Like, I don't want to just be okay with losing. I don't want my athletes to be okay with losing. They're supposed to be the best in the world. And if you're not trying – look, if you're uh, an Olympic athlete, if you're a what? ring girl, if you're a painter, if you're an actor, if you're a podcast host, you're supposed to be the best. What's your opinion on the Travis Kelsey thing with his coach? I think I love it. You know why? Yeah. Because they both came out and said, I understand that person. That's yeah. the relationship we have. And to me, it's just like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. It's nobody else's business. Right. Let them live their life. Yeah. If they're trying, they're trying to win the damn Super Bowl. Yeah. So that was a competitive moment. And I Absolutely. feel like he's being chewed up in the media for something that like behind closed doors, coaches like, fuck, man. Piss like, off. Okay. They won that day. <laughs> I, I I want my athletes They're the best to want to be the, the best. World, whether you love them or hate them, they mm. fucking back to back Super Bowl champs. And I think that's like a moment where like meteors. Uh, Patrick, what's that? Patrick Mahomes. He grew up probably about an hour and a half north of me in Croc or in Tyler White House, uh, East Texas boy. Is he? That's right. He is a Texas yeah. kid. How hard is it to turn that energy off? Once you get off the ball, good or bad, like we're talking about, yeah. it, right? Like that emotion you're putting a lot of. Uh, you know, build up to the ride, and then once you get off, it differs for me. Sometimes it's real quick. It's a pick because I'm always trying to be in a good mood, be positive, and then sometimes I let it wear on me. This is random because now I'm thinking about my own like <laughs> my own situations. Like, do you guys have a hard time sleeping at night? Like after you're in an arena filled with people like this, do you have a hard time coming down off that high? Mm -hmm. Well, very yeah. so. It's very hard. Yeah. Like, and I, a lot of times after the event, I, it's hard for me to go eat. Like everybody wants to go get dinner and stuff. My adrenaline's running so much. I really can't eat till about midnight or one that morning. And a lot of times I'm asleep by then. So I'll just wake up next morning and go eat. You're one of the calmest people I know. Do you, do you still have a hard time coming down off that? Oh yeah. Like last night I, I went for like, like a two mile, like walk. Really? Kind of like I was, you know, I'm kind of frustrated to a point didn't want to, they want to be around anybody, so I just went walking. Yeah, yeah that's how off. tough they are. He went on a two mile walk in downtown Los Angeles. Yeah, I was he thinking that's how tough big. he is. Oh, okay, <laughs> they're just walking zombies. I was ready to see how tough I was. <laughs> <laughs> taking out some aggression. Yeah. I didn't get no aggression taken out. Man, he's like, yeah, 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 maybe that's good. <laughs> I just went for a walk on Skid Row. All good, dude. I'm, I'm all my good. My adrenaline came down. I'm good. Man, that's that's tough. Here's Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's waiting to eat in the morning. That, that 
that, that, that's got to be though, you know, 20, 30,000 people, whatever it is, the adrenaline or riding the bull, the build up to it all. And, and, and the come down is all of a sudden you're back in your hotel room by yourself, like alone. I guess that happened. Right. And yeah. all of the energy, if you look around like the arena, it's all coming central, right? So every single eye, every single scream and holler, I mean, just, oh shit, from UFC, <laughs> from UFC, it's the same thing. It's like when all the energy is directed to the middle, we absorb everything. Yeah. What a great feeling though when it is a good ride, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And you get that whole crowd just focused on you. Yeah. It's 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 the reason that we see so many people kind of lose their way because there's so much attention and you're used to being in the spotlight and you're used to all that adrenaline rush that when you go back to the hotel and it's just you, it's lonely. And you're like you're constantly looking for that that fuel, that that feeling again. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what it's like, but these guys are doing it every single weekend and like figuring out how to ride that wave. Did you ever ride bulls compete? I tried it. You know how you were talking about was a gator hunting? Yeah. At one time being the dumbest thing you've ever done. It was the dumbest thing we've ever done. I, I had been well, around the, this. The sport. reason why is because we brought a film crew with us and we could have killed everyone. <laughs> I well, I could have killed myself. And then he left me in a kayak, inflatable kayak on a river with the actual crocodile, crocodile hunter. And you guys are still And I was just on this raft with, yeah. the, with the salsa dancer in night. This was like in the middle of the night. And I'm like, all right, hey, guys. And they just like take off. I'm like, okay, so there's a big one around here, right? Oh, all right. What story includes I was on a raft with a salsa dancer? <laughs> in the middle of a night. In the middle of With alligators. Night. Not the salsa. story I well, want we to tell. We went to salsa <laughs> the night before and said, we're going crocodile hunting. You want to come with? And yeah. she came with. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> I, I got on a bull one time. I'd been around it my whole life. Yeah. Um, I had been announcing. I got in really good shape. And these guys just kept chirping at me. Like, you talk about what we're doing all the time. And I study it. So I thought, I'll at least be able to kind of fake my way through it. I get on a bull that couldn't jump over this piece of paper. And it was the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. I enrolled in the same college three different times, never passed a semester. So I've done some dumb shit. <laughs> this was the dumbest thing I'd ever done. Wow. I landed on the back of my head. I was clueless where I was at for 45 minutes. It was so incredibly hard, but it all comes back to why. That's why I have so much respect for the, what these guys have done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, at least you got up there and, and tried, tried it. it. Had to try it, man. And you, you mentioned earlier, like the steer level, like how big are those bulls or is Oh, so now they have like miniature bull riding and, and that's actually pretty big now, yeah. nowadays. Um, and they have their own leagues and everything and Boudreaux can say more about it cause he kind of grew up. There wasn't very many young bull riders in New York. Um, but what? what's the age limit to still get into the steer level so class? Usually uh, start on the sheep and the goats about four years old, three okay. and four years old. And then from about five, six, seven, eight years old is calf riding. Nine to ten, you get into some steers. So those steers are going to weigh probably 500 to 600 pounds. Um, and then when you're 12 to 15, you're getting on young bulls to 1,000 pound steers. Is there like a veteran steer class? That's like can 40 year olds get on the steer? <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, what you, I'm wondering. Yeah, you hey, come to my house and get Cause I feel like I missed go. a We're few steps. You You're hey. gonna take him snowboarding. I don't wanna go, go get sheep. you on a- I don't wanna go from sheep to bull. A few years ago, we put Holly Holm on a miniature bull in Albuquerque. And like it was a miniature bull that kind of jumped out there and turned back kind of had the feel of it. So maybe that's the direction we should go. I like, I like that. Start there. I like. I like that. Like that yeah. idea. Boys, good luck tonight, both of you. All right. May you ride the that eight seconds. May we we, we get two full rides out of both of you, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us thank today, you guys, man. Brittany, thank you as always. Danny, thank you, guys. Thank you in the chat. Thank you for everyone tuning in. PBR in LA, Monster Energy. Thank you for everyone, boys. Best of luck tonight. Thank you, Boudreaux. Thank you, Dalen. You guys are awesome. Woo! Thank you. Unleash the beasts.